What's up, guys? All right, that looks a little better. Let me let this run for a minute, take care of the tunes. Oh, let's see what we got here. Username, Bob Davalina. Hey, buddy. Uh, I don't know. I'll send her in. You need to go to bed, though, okay? My son. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're up and running. Again. <laughs> Excuse my technical difficulties. I just watch the movie Predator and uh, I get the feeling that that big battle scene in the end is exactly uh, how the internet company and I is. That's how that shit's gonna go down. It's just ridiculous. Alright, so it looks like we're good to go. Um, let me pull over one of my beautiful Chinette pallets here. I think we're gonna do a lot of line work tonight. We are gonna deck this out. Uh, this would be the ocean. So along these top lines, I'll bring in some of the oranges and then, you know kind of you know, and then just get real you know into these teals and whatnot so um all that good stuff let's finish this way okay all right all right let's finish it i got some of the older tracks i've been playing the last couple weeks from uh Black, what is it? Black Sheep Headquarters, uh, Llama A, Sugar, Riken Funk, Cache, um, a lot of the stuff from the time lapses that I've uh, produced, so, um, or music that has been produced for my time lapses. And, uh, but Sugar is on a beer run right now, and uh, he's going to get chocolate and goodies. When he gets back, he's going to start playing some music. So we have them all set up back here, and, um, and we're good to go. All right, so last night, what did we do? Everything. This was essentially black and white last night. So, um, dropped in a lot of the washes, got the, you know, got the colors kind of cranking, little uh, oranges over by the explosions and whatnot, and then brought in uh, maybe, maybe nights coming over the horizon here. We got our 30 caliber Browning, uh, Browning 30 caliber machine guns. Uh, Decided uh, with some help from the uh, chat room what the color scheme was going to be. I wanted it to be red and white alternating initially, and then I thought, well, that's going to look like a candy cane with a machine gun, which might be funny from some uh, shitty B Christmas movie, but not for this painting. So we decided to go with like a leather, kind of a leather brown, and then like a red stinger on the end. Let's see if I can like, lift that up a little. There you go. You see the detail on that. Bring that down. So, um,. Kind of went with a lime green instead of an olive green on the machine guns to give it a little bit of a sci-fi feel to it, but really brighten up, uh, especially this gun against the backdrop of this, um, uh, the metal plating on our uh, whale landing craft. So this is a typical World War II landing craft. Um, kind of a combination between the, the ramp type that would uh, send the guys out and the larger, more enclosed, landing craft that would launch tanks and whatnot so he's kind of a hybrid and then we threw in some of these angry red spots uh maybe it's blood maybe he went through uh some underwater poison kelp who knows um started putting in some of the insignia the uh the us uh star and then um obviously i'll i'll, I'll probably add a uh, let some lettering in the end or maybe down here uh, to identifying uh, numbers. Got a little pillbox here on the hill, I'll blacken that in and maybe gray it up or whatnot. Dropped in the coastline to end the night last night and we have an ocean. I've already started by kind of uh, yeah, differentiating the fact that, you know, anything underwater we shaded with blue as opposed to gray. And then um, 
uh, went in and, and did basic line work. So when I start going over it again, it'll actually cut through, you know, the whale and, and the line work and whatnot. So, um, and I, let me try and pull up, a, or try and pull up, let me pull up a picture here of, um, uh, on my website, just for reference. We're, we might not go this crazy with the line work because this was supposed to be a very, very, very trippy piece. But this is a Led Zeppelin concept piece that I did, um, or tribute piece, sorry. The uh, magazine I work for did a, um, um, ugh, where's the camera? It's called There's a Lady. You can check it out at SeanDietrichArt.com, but if you check out the water and all the line work, you can see like kind of where we're going with it. So um, we definitely want to get in there and give it a lot of texture. But I don't want to get, I think, get it that clogged up because it might... Uh, I think it's it's basically going to be a lot more line work at the top, and then as it it's sort of around here, it'll start to kind of fizzle a little because I I really want to um, accentuate the tail and make sure you can see the whale tail. A little sip of coffee. It's got these vinyl stickers from Honest Brutality with my new logo on it. Pretty bitchin'. Okay. Um. So I'm basically going to throw in um. Get some of the same blues going as last night, as well as uh, these darker blues, some Hill Street blues. <laughs> All right. Friday. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it's Friday already. Thanks for uh, for joining me for another week. It's my second full week streaming on uh, Twitch. I can't believe it's been two weeks already. Um, pretty crazy. How time flies. And we're going to go with some yellows too, because I do have, uh, I want to bring them into the reflections on top of the top of the waves. So we're just gonna um, we're just gonna start going in and laying out color. And we're gonna do the lighter one as a base color and we're literally just kinda kinda flowing with the wave. And I like to just cut lines in like that, you know. And we'll blend it in and bring in some of the uh, some of the blues up here too, so it doesn't look like someone just urinated in the ocean, and uh, and that's that's what you have. song and you get so involved and in maybe talking or doing whatever that you're like, did I play that song? Yeah, I did. And I didn't hear one fucking note of it. Weird. Alright, so we'll just keep, keep the yellows more. I think that's supposed to be sky, maybe. I don't know. I'll figure that one out. For now, we will uh, put the yellow in there. fact we can actually blend out a little bit, make this a little bit brighter with that yellow. There we go. You know, almost maybe like the, the water is on fire behind him from gasoline or maybe another one of these guys that got struck. Because in the painting there is going to be one of these uh, 
one of our friendly whales here on fire from some munitions or uh, it exploded or it took a direct hit and all the men inside are on fire. Very popular imagery in Private Ryan or any any Call of Duty World War II game or any World War II video game for that matter. They like to have that, that, that landing craft where the guys are pouring out of it on fire. Bring it in. You can see how the yellow, you know, <clears throat> looks a lot brighter in person, but definitely creates that greens. You know, some of the greens creates greens. Um, you know, and we're gonna keep. Uh, we're just gonna just a, just a smidge of yellow back here. I'm gonna keep this a lot darker back there. But we will take it up around the back of him. And bring it down. There we go. A little bit of urine. <laughs> and I like that. I'm going to take this yellow and uh, scrub it. <clears throat> Get a scrub on. What I'm trying to do is the first night I actually arranged a bunch of the tracks and it came out to be a really cool playlist or a really cool arrangement and then I uh, I didn't save it. <laughs> it's like heroin man, now I'm just trying to find that fix again. But I can never get the songs in the right order to where it, to where it takes me on that journey. <laughs> and a trusty rag. Get in there and scrub that shit in there. There we go. Alright. So, this is blazing in the background. I love it. I love it. Not bad. Dropped in. Introduction. 12 minutes online already, and we're, we're already setting the fucking world on fire. All right. <clears throat> That's really all, all it takes. Ask my friend's little boy who almost set my front lawn on fire the other day with a sparkler. That does not take much. Okay, and what I want to do is find a nicer, neater, flatter brush. What do we got over here? You kind of might do. Right. Well, Shawnee D needs to make a brush run. Uh, we're actually going to take a little bit of clean water. I know I use dirty water for up here because I like the impurities. But I like my oceans clean, so. I'm gonna drop a little, little cleany water in here to start, basically just start flushing in. You know, kind of the, kind of the ridges.
almost gonna feel well, very watercolory. up all these uh, all this line work as well so anything that kind of gets mowed over gets paint on it that's a okay a freaking okay darkened it up but we do want to you know with, with like this or whatnot we get right over the whale that's just a big old it's just a big old wave Bob Ross iconic nautical expert to get the flow of the and like I said as we get down here it's really just gonna be up kind of on these last few just to add depth as if like we're here and the water kind of starts to just drop off so you know maybe we're like in the, the u-boat painting I did with the mermaids maybe maybe we are out in the uh, you know whatnot stars are What's up buddy Yes, thank you. Super stoked on those mosquitoes. So, but I'm even more stoked when I get to do the painting of them. So we'll we'll actually do the mosquito painting next after this, and uh, and get uh, get a close up of their internal workings, or at least figure out how they work. <laughs> They're just a simple bug with a machine gun on their face. <laughs> All right. Oh, it looks like tonight you're lime green in color. I'm watching people's screen names change colors. I know they're doing it to match the painting. It's all good. <laughs> Just a very basic look at how the water is going to flow. We'll go in and just cut those same lines up underneath the, the 
the whale's hairy armpits. Maybe I should do that. Just give him, just give him some, some, some pit throws. He's like, I'm at war, man. I've been working hard. I haven't had time to shave. That might be a little too surreal for the client. <laughs> already happy that he's letting me get this weird <laughs> animalizing the characters or uh, vehicles yeah and this will be nice just this top edge where the water actually hits him just kind of fade out that bottom part right there and you can start to see how it puts it you know starts setting the whale back Some artists would be done. <laughs> we're gonna take uh, kind of right along the edge of some of these. Just this darker blue. something darker hiding in there. All right. There we go. like you're riding on the wave. Woo! I got shot down. Now I'm floating in, in the channel. There we go. And it'll do a lot of splashing too. Get some of that foam splashing up there. Some white, you know. Uh, some, some bright whites. So let's, uh, yeah, let's bring some of this darker blue. Okay. Oh, my fucking nose is just... Let's need coffee. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um... You know, in a really cool fact, which I gotta get some of it out of my paint bag. Do I have any of that green? Okay, so I need some green. Not seafoam green. Oh no. There we go. Just kind of a 
straight up green. But I'll show you something that I uh, used to do a lot of. As you can see, all these lines get a lot tighter as they get towards the top of the uh, the wave. There's just a lot more variation going on. So. Yeah, I can't wait to start painting a mosquito painting. I want to like, like shave something in their hair. Or maybe that's where they'll, you know, that's where their identifying numbers will be. Or give one a big fucking mohawk or something. Maybe I'll look too much like gremlins. <laughs> I think that that might also that character might almost be worthy of a t-shirt I could rock a rock a 30 cal mosquito shirt yeah uh, let me grab that green this one my gear bag there it is okay all right uh, is this good? Here it is. Yeah. And what I would do a lot of times, pop a little red green in here. One more coffee. Get a blender. Hmm. Let's see here. There's not much the, um, you know, with these ocean scenes too, you can go in and do a lot of this uh, kind of splattering work as well, especially up around the, uh, the whale. I don't know why I have a toothbrush for this. I think I should probably go steal a toothbrush. I used to do that to my daughter all the time. She'd wake up in the morning and be like, Daddy stole my toothbrush. <laughs> to make a painting. She doesn't really talk like that. But. Streaming 100% helps my productivity. I got to tell you, these last few paintings I've worked on have uh, really stepped up my game. Like, I've been exceptionally proud of how the technique has come together, how I've actually... Because a lot of times it's kind of second nature and I'll just be kind of noodling around and... and but actually being like streaming and actually talking my way through what I'm actually doing. It's, it's amazing how much, not maybe that I didn't pay attention to what I was doing, but I pay attention to the detail a lot more. And like when I say, oh, I need to do this to make it look like it's tucked up underneath here and pay attention to the shading. Um, it's, yeah, stuff like that. It, it, it's amazing how much it's, uh, it's helped. And just the fact that, you know, I have to bring it. I have to make it look good. I have to, you know, I want to make sure it entertains everybody who's, who's watching and whether it be one person or a million people eventually. Um, but having a set schedule and knowing that I'm going to be painting for anywhere between three and six hours a night has, uh, has definitely helped. So. Um, and I think conceptually, like, you know, kind of going for it with some of the, uh, uh, some of the concepts, like actually saying, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do paintings of all these, these characters. I love how that blue and that orange go together. Where they're unnecessary <coughs> per se, but like I said, it just adds like an advanced element to uh, the painting, you know, this big painting I'm working on for this client that he has no idea what he's about to get, but I think it's going to be one of my masterpieces if I do say so myself, like as far as how much time and effort I put into it, you know, but, um, 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually very impressed with this little social experiment for, uh, for the last two weeks, um, or a week and a half, if you count my sick days. Sorry, boss. I know I just got hired, but I got sick. <laughs> yeah, I'm super stoked. And, um, and I got to tell you, my Instagram, too, and whatnot, I've been posting, like, you know, regularly posting all these updates um, over the last week of these new paintings and it's gone from I don't know 50 to 150 you know likes on on a photo or whatnot uh and, and now it's upwards of 400 so it's it's definitely uh it's definitely been really cool um no I don't I don't foresee stopping anytime soon just because it is like I said it, it guarantees that each night I'm going to be let's say putting in three to six hours of painting a night moon witch what's up how you doing we're just talking about the uh, how how the last couple of weeks of my Twitch has uh, you know helped my productivity. Um, Cigarzar was asking about it. Um, yeah, I'm I'm totally not worried about followers or people watching or whatnot. I mean, that's you know it, it'll come with time for sure. And I think what I do is is you know uh, I think it's on a level that uh, let's just say you know I don't want to brag, but you know I've I've seen what's out there in the creative stream. <laughs> so I'd like to think I'm bringing something a little unique, but, um, yeah, I mean, what's that? I mean, if it's five nights, if I am on five nights a week and I'm doing, you know, I mean, that's anywhere between 15 to, uh, uh, 30 hours of painting a week, which is like the minimum I should be doing. Um, which means during the daytime I handle a lot of the business stuff. Like today I worked on uh, grunt work crap, which is like, um, Oh, I had to get uh, files from the printer and send them over to my tapestry maker. I have the, uh, in fact, the Mad Hatter and the Fear and Loathing one I just did last week are already off in production. So they are being made into face shields, tapestries, bandanas, and uh, uh, silicone dab mats. And, and so they're already off in, into production, which is amazing that within a week of, you know, it's like I've already, you know, 10,000 products are coming, in, you know gonna be hitting hitting soon um but also um i was working on the uh digital like I, I, like the only thing i really do in photoshop is i uh like i had to design the backer cards for the hat pins i have coming out so i have a hatter and a cheshire and a Michelobio alien hat pin and i had to come up with the um you know all that stuff yes products are in my store if you click on my link seandietrickart.com uh under merch it's all lumped under, uh, that, that's all together right now. I haven't separated it out into like t-shirts or, um, in fact, I don't know if the t-shirts are up yet, but the Rosie the Riveter shirt might be up, but yes, all the products so far are up on the uh, site. And then um, through my dealings in, in, uh, in talking with distribution companies, so it's a whole different animal when you go out to a rock show and, and you guys probably know this from going from festivals, like, um, if you go to a festival, you're going to pay a lot more for things. I mean, that's just the way it is. You know, I mean, people charge you a lot more for stuff. So, so I'm used to selling my art for one price at a festival, but even, <clears throat> I mean, it's art. I'm not really, uh, you know, worried that there's a, a non festival pricing for art. So it's a little bit different than buying a $14 beer as opposed to go in the store and buying the same beer for $3. Um, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> but, uh, <clears throat> last of the cold coming up. Um, but like with the large tapestries, like, like the one behind me here, this yellow one, that's, that's eight feet by five feet is that tapestry. And, um, so I sell those for 140 bucks and a lot of people will be like 140 bucks for a tapestry. And I'm like, you know, yeah, that takes up an eight foot by five foot section on the wall. And I, and I don't mass produce these in like millions, you know, or hundreds of thousands quantities. So yeah, you could go on Amazon and get an eight by five for 20 bucks of some bullshit Indian, you know, thing that was made over in India and shipped over or some design they ripped off the internet. But, um, but like with distribution companies, you know, and if, if you guys ever deal with distribution companies or licensing companies for your art, you know, you're only going to get a 12% commission. Whereas like I'm a direct manufacturer, so I'm getting 50 up to 50%, you know, half with my business partner. Um, 
but the distributors can't go to a store a lot of times and say, oh, well, all of our other tapestries are, you know, they wholesale for $15, but these wholesale for 50 or 60 bucks. So, you know, so I thought, okay, well, what I might do with the big tapestries is limit the big ones to 100. So I run off 100 of them, I sell them for 140. That's still 14 grand per run of tapestries, which is a good amount of money. And, you know, but it also allows me to put out something limited edition that's a product and, um, and then not interfere with like any of the distribution stuff. And then I do have a smaller two foot by three foot tapestry that we do wholesale to the distributors. So, so it's been interesting dealing with uh, all the, you know, the distro, the wholesale, that, the, the, that whole side of the game over the last month. So um, more information on that to come as I, uh, as I weave my way through that uh, wonderful world. But yeah, so definitely always coming up with you know, different ways to get the artwork out there as well. And, um, but yes, happy to say Hunter and the, the Honey Hatter are on their way to production. The prints are already being produced. You can already order prints and whatnot on the website. That's, those are easy. My guy has been set up for the last 12 years printing my artwork and for a decade or whatever. And man, he does a great job. In fact, he just, uh, I think it's Spirit Printing Services on Instagram is um, uh, on his story today. He just released an acrylic. So I do prints on, on, you know, I do rag paper, I do poster paper, I do like fine art paper. And then I do wood, I print on metal, and I print on canvas. And, uh, uh, but he just released acrylic which is awesome because you can backlight it which is really cool hunter is not on there yet just the print is on the site uh not the um bandanas or anything they literally just went in for sampling so it'll probably be about three weeks four weeks before the actual uh any kind of textile is ready for uh tapestry face shield any of that but um uh but just the the prints the uh, limited edition prints are available and then the, as well as the ones on metal, canvas, wood. We're working on it. I also have these, um, hey, where'd he go? I'm gonna send these out with, uh, with an order. Did Sugar take it back? Cause it is his. Uh, I always forget to bring these out. Where is that little guy? Oh shit, did I just dump water at all? Uh, I'll have to find out where, uh, oh, here he is. I don't know if I showed this off, but got these little, there's the hatter on top of a tea kettle or teapot dab rig, but I just had these stickers made up as samples uh, to show the production company how I wanted them die cut. So I just did these, uh, did these little stickers and then um, uh, I'll throw one in with an order or whatnot. What's a face shield? So a bandana you tie around, a face shield is a tube that goes over your head and you just kind of, you just kind of wear it like this. And then when you're ready it, to use it, you just pull it up over your head. So instead of having something tied around your, your neck or whatnot, it's uh, it literally is just a, a tube that has the image on both sides, it goes around your head and it just kind of looks like a scarf and then you pull it right up over your, uh, over your face. So yeah, I've got the Hatter and I got Wizard of Oz for those. And then I have, um... Uh, oh, where is he? I know I just had him. The Cheshire, uh, the round Cheshire. Um, I showed him off of earlier stream, but, um, uh, but the, but the smile, I'm actually going to turn it and, and convert it sideways. So when you pull the face shield up, it actually has a Cheshire smile on, on the, uh, on, uh, your face. So when you're walking around, it's ee. And then I've had requests for all sorts of stuff. I mean, pocket squares for suits with like the Cheshire's eyes poking out, you know, a little, uh, maybe try and get a line of those in Nordstrom's or whatnot, or, you know, um, once people start seeing that I'm producing these products, it's funny, like how many cool ideas will actually like pop out of, uh, um, out of people's heads, how many requests I'll get or whatnot. And I'm like, oh yeah, for sure. We could do that. So I dumped a bunch of green paint there. And what we're going to do with that is kind of, we're going to bring the ocean up a little, you know, so we're going to, 
I'm just going to take a little bit. And I just love how this green interacts with that teal. It just really makes it scream. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing, too. Um, when you said something about commission and whatnot. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the idea with the tapestries, I mean, it's it's just being able to offer someone a larger scale piece without them having to pay. I mean, like a canvas version of like the Wizard of Oz or like a three by four canvas print runs like a thousand bucks. So it's like, that's only three feet by four feet. Now, if you want a five foot by eight foot tapestry, $140 isn't sounding too bad, you know? So, well, you know, when we were coming up with the pricing, we knew some people would be kind of, oh my God. But then I kind of explained that to them and they were like, oh, and I'm like, yeah, you know, so we're, we're trying to make sure we fit everyone's budget and, you know, our, our, not everybody's going to be able to afford an original, obviously, or anything like that. So I'm, you know, always trying to come up with different ideas to get the artwork out there and making sure everybody has a fair shot of it. And I just, you know, bring this green, just kind of fade it, especially over the tail here. And it really kind of sinks things down into that ocean. And that's, you know, once you start looking to sell your artwork and, and kind of get out there in the realm of, uh, of, of producing to be an artist, it's, it's all about looking at the price points. And making sure you have a little something for everyone. I'm not a fan of having anything less than 20 bucks on my table at the rock shows, though. Because even though it adds up, you tend to have people that are like, oh, I'll take that dollar sticker, you know, and look you up online. Guess how many people do? El Zippo. <laughs> I mean, a few do, but... Let me look a little a darker blue edge here. <laughs> you know it's not to be cynical or anything I mean it's just like I've done so many shows it's it's you just you see people's habits I mean you you know the buyer's habits you, you know you, you see it over and over again and you're like oh yeah okay and, and that's why like if someone does return or they do hit me up afterwards it's like I try and make sure they get the royal treatment. I throw them all sorts of goodies and, you know, I always make sure I have an extra like little art magazine laying around or, or maybe uh, um, some stickers or whatnot just to throw in there and say, hey, that was really cool to, to follow up and remember me. There we go. Let's strip some of that color away. but. Since it was a majority blue underneath, it's going to bring all those blues back uh, to the green there. Yeah, see? Exactly. One bar of soap takes her time. She's always tries to upgrade to a bundle. Exactly. And that's that's what it is. That's the bundle deals, you know. And, and um, Or it's like my 11 by 17 prints. You know, they're, they're the least expensive thing for me to run off. So that's what I use as a bargaining tool. So it's like if you, you know, if someone's looking at buying a five six $600 reproduction or a canvas print or something, I'll be like, hey, if you pick that up, you know, it's special order. We'll mail it out to you at the show. You know, if they're ordering it at a rock show, you know, it takes about a week. It'll get it mailed out to you. But, um, you know, why don't you pick out three prints right now, the 11 by 17s, and, and you can take them with you. That way you're getting something now. You're getting a little something extra and, you know, you'll have something on your wall that you, you know, while you're waiting for the uh, the bigger piece to go in. So, yeah, bundle deals and stuff like that. I mean, especially in her business, I'm assuming it's, it's more moving volume than trying to move. I mean, obviously, there's probably not a $20,000 piece of, you know, bar of soap. <laughs> yeah. 
And I get, you know, I mean, if there's someone, there are people that come to the booth that are genuinely like, look, dude, I got five bucks to my name. I really want this, you know, $10 mat. Uh, I'll be like, of course, man, like, go ahead, you know, and, and I'll, uh, I'll always cut deals like that. I mean, you know, cause for me too, I got to look at, I got to look at the perspective of like a lot of it, if it's just a younger, poorer crowd or, you know, just starting out and they don't have a lot of money, but they love art. It's like, I don't want to deter them from supporting the arts or getting into art because if they get shunned by artists at a young age, or they think that art is this luxury that they can't even afford the smallest thing, then they're basically just going to grow up to be these people that, you know, work their rest of their lives and piss their money away on 50 inch TVs and, and, uh, and uh, useless cars and shit like that and, and all sorts of garbage, you know, as opposed to investing in art. Because it's not a car, it's a depreciating liability. <laughs> I learned that young. <laughs> when you drive my art off the lot, it is not going to lose 20% of its value. <laughs> but yeah, for me, it's all about making sure the the younger generation and you know is, is inspired because most of the kids that'll come up to me at a rock show that are interested are also artists and i want to make sure they get a they get a, a they get a good vibe and b I, uh, I i just i love it when the parents try and bring it up and be like you know look this is you know tell my kid how hard it is to be an artist and it's impossible and, and i'll be like it is the coolest thing ever and go for it and life will suck until you make it but you'll be having fun, <laughs> you, know, like, you know, and, and just looking at the look of horror on the parents' faces when they're like, that's not what I want you to tell my kid. <laughs> but there's also, you know, on the, on the, on the flip side of that, I've met some really cool parents and I wish I keep, I wish I had kept a log of all their names and email addresses or whatever. So I could put them on a Christmas card list, um, where they have brought their children up to look at the artwork and talk to me as an artist. And, get advice and, and just support them. And it's just like, man, you are a rad ass parent, you know, like you deserve some sort of an award or I don't know what, but, but yeah, any, any, uh, any parent that comes up to the rock show and I always throw them, kick them down something for free or cause it's, you know, you just got to give them that guidance. You know, because a lot of them don't have, like, you know, it's either you got to have the guidance or you got to, you know, have, like, on my end, like, the pure insanity enough to uh, to just say, fuck it, and I got nothing better to do, <laughs> and just go for it. I mean, there's definitely a, two, a, two very distinct types of artists out there. But I just hope there's enough insane ones that actually are are sane enough to know that once they do make it, it's, it's definitely their responsibility to uh, to pass that knowledge on uh, to other artists. At least that's my belief. Where's my beer, sugar? Jesus. <laughs> All right. I'll do the old. The old Bob Ross, just draw it across. Just blend it on. Dear ocean. Maybe there's this killer squid underneath this guy. Okay. I kind of like where that went. Um, I think I... Cut a little more of this blue am I think. Yeah, maybe even leave some of that thickness. I don't usually leave like thick paint on the canvas, but I kinda like that. Yeah. The blue almost like frames it up.
Oops. Oh, it's okay. Another shirt ruined by paint. <laughs> That's why you just buy the 10 pack of black t shirts. What fashion? That's for funerals and weddings. <laughs> You know what time it is. Time to ink. Holbein. Which reminds me, I gotta order more. I think I'm just about out as well, so I gotta put an order in. I gotta find the, uh, I know they do sell a six ounce bottle of it, I think. So instead of paying like 15 bucks an ounce, I think it's six ounces for 70 bucks or something. It's almost like getting an ounce free or. 15 times 4 is 16. Yeah, just about. Count for two for free. Oh shit, that was my drinking water. Alright. Our dog Cinnamon, who lays in the corner over there. Surprised you haven't heard her snoring. Sometimes she snores ridiculously loud. <laughs> And we are literally just gonna go in right on top. Kind of darken in. We'll kinda we're actually gonna you know, yeah, we're gonna come across. fade in a little bit of that green. I just want I want that under the water. I made a change. And then I can, you know. <laughs> oh, when I go back over, yeah, you know, but you just don't worry about going over it, don't worry about, you know, like in this instance, there's even a little bit of like, where the, the line that I put in is thinner, so you can also still kind of see the multi-tone, you know, of, of the line below it, so... You just, you know, you just gotta go for it. I'm gonna try a little bit different technique here. To me. <laughs> that is a very, very true statement. I have been doing it so long. <laughs> You're right. That was that was very uh, pretentious of me to just throw that out there because <laughs> it does take time. I meant just you know, don't worry about getting it exactly like where it 
on that old line because it's probably not going to do, you know, be there, but, but you'll make it work. Six hours of Sean's stream. Tiny little lines in the water. Sounds like an Enya album. Sound like a lot fun song. Don't kill the doggies. I got a big eight foot U nine foot U boat painting I did and it took me fifteen hours alone to do the bubbles. <laughs> Cause I had to uh I'd go in and do each bubble and then I had to um go back and highlight the bubble and then I had to darken each bubble. I didn't have to but you know. Yeah it is. Yeah, I've been having a good late night crowd show up. Um, we had about 11 people watching last night. Towards the latter side of things. I think on the weekends I might pop in and uh, maybe do like a little day, day stream. Um, just to kind of capture some of that crowd. I gotta switch it up and whatnot. Occasionally. Um, oh, so my Facebook mural, yeah, you know, that was my very first mural job ever, actually, which is funny, because I used to tell interviewers that I would only do murals for multi-billion dollar companies, as a joke. Um, uh, that was, I met John King, he used to be the head of networking for Facebook, and I met him at a Wednesday night techno night in uh, San Francisco. So there's a place called, it used to be called Icon Lounge, and they changed the name to F8, um, but they throw one of the most awesome Wednesday night uh, house uh, techno nights and he just happened to be there and what was funny is maybe six months before I met him all my I had some other friends that were there and uh, <laughs> and they met him and between the three of them, nobody got his number. <laughs> so he came in that night, and, and uh, I remember him walking up, and, and he said, "Hey, man, I'm you know I'm with Facebook." And I said, "Oh, wait a minute, you met my buddy Vincent, and da da da, and this and that." And he's like, "Oh yeah." Um, and so we got to talking, and and he bought a bunch of art, and then uh, you know he's like, "Dude, we're always looking for artists, and um, let's let's get you over there to do a mural." And so a few months later, I was up at the Facebook corporate headquarters and uh, building number 16. I think they have, uh, they got a bunch of David Cho's work. The, obviously the artist, he's the one who made a, you know, 500 million off uh, the stock he took or whatever. So I didn't get paid quite that much, but they did pay me very well. <laughs> but yeah, I just happened to meet him. This techno night is absolutely amazing. I have met 
so many of my good friends. My friend Gideon uh, Hillman, he is one of the greatest, coolest industrial designers out there. And he, um, he used to work for Eight Incorporated and uh, hopefully I get this right, um, but he used to design all the modular installation, uh, like all the modular units for the Apple stores. And, um, and he's done some really cool stuff and, and uh, him and I are actually working on um, some cool display cases and things that make things rotate and levitate and, you know, for the artwork. So lots of good stuff. I uh, believe I met him at that same nightclub. I know I met him at 1015 Folsom. And then my friend Lily, who is like the head of iTunes, like outside the U.S. channels like Shanghai and Moscow and whatnot. But uh, I've done some painting or, or a painting. No, I've done a couple of paintings for her. But um, but I met them all just out and about, you know, doing. That's why I, I, the live art to me has always been very important, and it's always been like. Um, just one of my staples is, as far as being out there because I'm going to be the easiest guy to call when they need art because they were uh, they were there they saw me at the club painting they they know who I am um, I, I hung out with them I partied with them I, you know so um, the same with you know working with the rock shows now to get my artwork in the green rooms and it's just kind of like I want to be that guy I don't need to meet these bands but you know It'd be cool if they were like, oh, we need some art, and we'd, hey, remember that guy that uh, decked out our green room with the rolling trays and artwork, and let's call him up. So you just never know, absolutely never know who you're going to meet. The Facebook gig was awesome, mainly because their lunch, their cafeteria is fucking amazing. I think I made the mural go an extra three days just so I could eat there. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it is uh, on the second story around the corner from Zuckerberg's office in a hallway between networking and coding, I believe. <laughs> so it was, uh, you know, and it was it was one of those things that once I had a mural at Facebook, you know, it was like, that just sounded cool. It was like when I, when I worked on Twisted Metal for PlayStation, it was like a three week project. And they never ended ended up using any of the artwork because they got into a big argument with the producer or the developer or something like that. Um, which I hear is the fate of a lot of video games. You know, like Guillermo del Toro uh, was going to do that Silent Hill, and they uh, they botched that. But um, but still, just being able to say, oh yeah, I worked for PlayStation and and I helped design Sweet Tooth the Clown's backstory is like enough enough sometimes to get a to get a job. You know, back when I was just. Uh, fishing for work. <laughs> yeah, when you have that, like Asahi beer, OCB rolling papers, Facebook, uh, PlayStation, uh, Spike and Mike's animation, like my, you know, when, when my resume started growing like that, I was like, you know, it definitely, definitely opened doors. It's funny how one company on your, on your resume will you know, and you'll see it a lot at Comic-Con. Um, I actually sat next to the dude and I am uh, regretful that I, I don't remember his name, but the first Thor movie, he did he did the animated end credits. And, um, but that was his pitch all weekend was, you know, who are you? Oh, I did, you know, I did all the artwork for the end of Thor. You know, I mean, that was, that was a big thing. So, you know, definitely use it. And it was cool. But he had a, you know, he had a lot of other uh, really cool artwork at his booth. But, you know, you got to go uh, with what people are going to kind of remember to kickstart that conversation. You know, when you're, I don't know if he was necessarily starting out, but. Yeah, good old John King. That was such an awesome project. Yeah, my YouTube channel has um, a partial time lapse of the Facebook mural. And then um, it was funny, one day my... Uh, 
Wired Magazine put out a video called like the top 10 perks at working on Facebook or something like that. And my buddy just thought it'd be a cool video to watch. And he clicked on it and he's watching it and he's like, number three reason to work at Facebook is the art. And then it like pans back to my mural and he's like, he's like, wait a minute. He's like, I, I know that artist. <laughs> and so he, uh, he sent me the link. He's like, he's like, you're on the, uh, you're on Wired Magazine site, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. So it was a pretty cool little uh, little video. It was just like a blink, you know, like you could, oh yeah, that's me, you know. But it was enough for him to notice that it was my artwork, so I thought it was really cool that he, uh, hey, he noticed it and then, and then shot me over the lake. But that pattern work that you do, man, I mean, I could see, like, if that was painted on a wall, I mean, it's digital, right? So, I mean, even if you printed that out on, like, a really cool piece of, you know, piece of, piece of fabric or, or an art paper, yeah, I could see, like, corporations going apeshit, like, especially the Silicon Valley ones that want, you know, more creative, they don't want that corporate art bullshit. There we go. I think they would eat that up. You have a market. Uh, you know what? I could hook you up with my guy in San Diego, man. This guy could work wonders. Uh, he could probably run off. Uh, he's got various papers he could test for you. He's got acrylic, wood, metal, canvas, all that stuff. He's got, right now he's working with, uh, there, there's definitely a million different types of paper out there, but um, he has four different types of art paper. Oh, baby, and more. What's up? Welcome. Hey. <laughs> um, but he has two, like two fine art papers, and then two that have like a metallic sheen to them, which are really cool. So, um yeah, Sean at SeanDietrichArt.com. Drop me an email, man, and uh, let me know how I can connect with you. And let me talk to him about it, and uh, I, I'll um, have him run some samples off for you and, and shoot them over. I just want to—I want to see some of these printed. <laughs> like, <clears throat> oh, baby, and more. Welcome to the stream. What's how they call it? A stream. It's so soothing. It's like it's like a stream in the woods or taking a pee. All very relaxing things. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. It's four people sitting around watching me pee. <laughs> uh, yes, he could. He could definitely look at your work and know what would work. Um, and a lot of it, it just has to do with a. Uh, just printing it on the samples and taking a look at it and going, yeah, that works, you know. Um, because with the different mediums, it, it, we play around with, uh, like anything printed on the wood or metal, we don't use white ink. It's We allow the wood or the metal to show through. So you'll actually get like, you know, if it's more of like a woodsy kind of earthy tones or whatnot, you can actually uh, see the grain of the wood pop through. And, and man, on some of these... Uh, some of the paintings that have animals and whatnot, you know. I just know he brought me in on a raid once. First time I seen it. Oh, cool. Awesome. Welcome back. Yeah. Love them raids. <laughs> We're just um, working on this uh, World War II uh, landing craft whale. So I'm, I'm taking World War II vehicles and kind of animal animalizing them for a uh, commission that I'm working on for a buddy of mine. So this is, these are all the test paintings to make sure that, you know, I get it right for the real painting. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he works wonders, man. He just bought a bunch of brand new machines. He, um, in fact, hang on one second. Let me, uh, let me pull up his Instagram because I think they still, uh, spirit printing services. Yeah, I mean, that's him. 
that's going through all the samples that he's doing of my artwork for display. So there's three types of acrylic, there's metal, there's canvas. So he prints up one of each and then hangs them on the wall so people know. And then that, that's an acrylic. That's a half inch acrylic. So it's printed on like clear acrylic. He puts a black background and a hanger, but you can also backlight it. So he does like crazy shit and stuff that's like economical up to crazy expensive, depending on what your client wants, you know. Those acrylic ones, you can sell like 18 by 24 acrylics that are backlit for thousands. Um, just because of the, you know, the amount of work involved in producing them and, and whatnot. So it, it, you can definitely offer a lot of price points from, you know, a couple hundred bucks or less, you know, to uh, uh, basic G clays and, and on up to, um, uh, you know, the acrylics and the metal stuff. But all his machines are amazing. In fact, he's one of the printers. I think he has like, um, I think he has one machine where he's one of the few people on the West Coast to even have this machine. So, you know, but how much more time this will take? Uh, well, that's, I took about 10 minutes, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 89, you know, maybe 200 minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> it's gonna take a while. It's it's a lot more detailed up here, and it'll actually kind of fade as it goes down here, and I'll buff it out and makes it you know look like the ocean's coming up. But um, but my intention is to finish it tonight, and then I'll take it in Monday to get photographed at, at the uh, studio. Um, and then this weekend I'm gonna start on some new stuff. And uh, the very next painting we're gonna do after this is we're gonna do a full size painting uh, featuring the mosquitoes. So these machine gun mosquitoes, I'm actually gonna do a full painting, uh, detailing them, explaining kind of how the bullets go from the machine gun to the mosquito, um, kind of get into their backstory or their, their, their biological workings. And then we're gonna do the Sherman centipede tank, uh, which is, uh, where is that sketch? Next to me. Well, it was. It's gone. It's around, but it's like a centipede with a Sherman tank for a head. Um. <laughs> yeah. I honestly don't know. I, you know, it depends how long I stream. I usually last night I did a five and a half hour stream or five hour forty one minutes, I think. So. Um, I, I could see finishing this by 2, 3 a.m., you know, West Coast time. I'm, I'm up in Washington State, so, you know, it's so about the time, uh, cigars are, you're, you're out in Texas, right? So when you're getting back up for breakfast, I should be finished this thing. <laughs> yeah, this, the ink work to me, though, this is just, and this is dancing right here. This is just, you know, I could almost fall asleep to like this music and inking. <laughs> yeah, I do, uh, you know, I do spend some time looking at it, making sure, you know, kind of, um, like we were talking about earlier, if Twitch has actually helped me with productivity and whatnot. And, and I was saying like, actually you know having to talk and, and being able to like talk my way through a painting um it definitely is uh is, is something new for me because it um i'm actually saying it out loud and a lot of times the stuff's still just in your head and you're banging ideas around it kind of gets muddled but once it, it comes out for some reason it, it makes it finite and um and you have to deal with it You know, I tell my kids that all the time. I'm like, it's just, you know, write down your ideas, what you want to do. So I'm like, once you get it out on paper and it's running around wild, you have to deal with it. So, and I think uh, the last couple paintings that I've pulled off online have, have proven that um, I've made some, made some decisions that worked out. <laughs> yeah, I'm printing money. <laughs> trying to <laughs> yeah. 
and it's backed by more worth than the Federal Reserve has backing actual money. But yeah, remember, cigars are, drop me an email, sean at seandiedrickart.com, and then we can get something, uh, some samples over to my uh, printer. His name's Thomas with uh, Spirit Printing Services. And I think it's spirit underscore printing underscore services. This is Instagram, and that's where you can get a closer look at that. Uh, if you click on the icon and look at his story, you can see that acrylic. And, and all those samples that he did of the uh, the older Mad Hatter piece of mine. Right. Yeah. And then like with this line that I did and then buff and then brought in the water over it to kind of fade it. What I'm gonna do is just just kind of uh, not really go over the whole line again. I'm just gonna kinda of tap a little bit of the black on it. So that way it's still kind of, uh, it's still fade, you know, it's kind of faded and underwater and, it, and it's not completely um, solid underneath the water. It still has that kind of ethereal ghostly effect. And I know I haven't been able to zoom in a lot on this to show you the really fine detail work. But I swear it's there. <laughs> That's the actual originals, yeah. Yeah, the 18 by 16 by 20s will run about 4,000 for a original. Thanks for linking that up there. Yeah, that way you can see the first two, uh, the Honey Hatter and the uh, Fear and Loathing, uh, or Hunter Thompson piece, Fear and Bourbon in Louisville. And then if you use the drop down menus, you can uh, pick out, like, I want a poster, I want a canvas print and then pick the size. So, you know, it gives you like all your options for uh, reproductions and whatnot. Okay, so you saw the bourbon one in progress. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Love Hunter Thompson, love bourbon, love Louisville. <laughs> Last year was my first year doing, uh, I've actually partied in Louisville before, but it was my first time doing a festival there and what a fun town one of those gems of the south. It has to be considered the south. I don't know. It is Kentucky. Yeah, and then right now we're just, just texture in the water. And here we'll get down with like a lot of line work. And you can kind of see how it's starting to contrast the sky so it's like the it'll really pop and then the whale will pop against the sky because there's more detail so it's about layering you know all the elements and making sure that they're all balanced together you know kind of like i don't want to bring a lot of detail up here because i want these little guys to, to really pop out against the sky standing on top of the uh the whale but we will bring a little explosion in here a little bit later uh, a little blue dark grayish kind of ash cloud blowing out from behind the pillbox here Anybody want to name this guy? Should we give him a name? Take him suggestions. Moonwitch, get in here. It'll be a name time. <laughs> Fred the whale. <laughs> you know it's not going to be Ahab because he's a white whale. <laughs> Reminds me of like an old craft work track. 
And you can see like, you know, I kind of went around like some of the, where the yellow hit the green. And so it does give it like, you know, like it's reflected off specific. Whoop. Let's get a little close up of that line work right there for you. There you go. So you can see how some of the greens really are, are within some of the line work. I try and pay attention to that, but you know, like in some, uh, like maybe that area, it, it blends a little bit as well. So there's different you know, variations of light that are shimmering off the water. Even though it's not like a photorealistic interpretation of water, I still, uh, still try and pay attention to some of the aspects on, on how water works and reflections and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's incredible. That's a horrible name for a whale. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. This is a rougher canvas too than, uh, than those other 16 by 20s. You know. Sometimes you gotta touch that line again just to get that smooth. There we go. Alright. And then as we come down here, we'll start to, you know, kind of open up these, these really intricate lines a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then, you know, to where it's almost like you're, you're under water here and this is kind of the surface of water is coming at you. That's why I got into live art, you know, I've, like I said, I've painted over 4,500 events I've painted live in front of anywhere between two people and 150,000 in a, you know, at any given time. And I just love it. I love showing people the process. And cause I was, you know, going to museums as a kid, it's always like, shit, man, how did they paint that? Well, let me show you. Maybe not, you know, how did Da Vinci paint or whatever, but here's how Sean Dietrich painted. And maybe offer up, you know, different techniques or whatnot. Yeah, once I get the stream going, don't worry. I'll I'll, I'll start sending homework home with you guys and <laughs> draw me water. <laughs> All right. Oh shit. Oh, we got Ween. We got the, the country album. Sugar just came through the door with goodies. I got four. Ah. <laughs> so I didn't get chocolate ah. per se. You didn't get chocolate per se. But I got two different kinds of ice cream. Two different kinds of ice cream. Jesus Christ. I just had ice cream after dinner. You did? <laughs> yeah. Well, I had to buy ice cream for Gwen because she got braces. Well, I got more ice cream for her. Nice. Because it was prior to her sale. All right. I got two different, it's, it's Reese's Pieces and Reese's Peanut Butter Cup mix. Reese's Pieces and Reese's Pieces peanut butter cup mixed ice cream. And then the other, and the other ice cream. Two different kinds of Chips Ahoy cookies. Two different kinds of Chips Ahoy uh, uh, cookies. I almost said hookers. 
And then I also got uh, chocolatey chip Eggo waffles. Chocolate chip Eggo waffles. Can you tell Sugar smokes a shitload of weed? <laughs> Because <laughs> he's like, I'm going to Safeway, and I'm like, oh, maybe he's getting a few provisions. Two types of ice cream, PBR, and Eggo waffles with chocolate chips. <laughs> well, then, then, then like, <laughs> That's great. Oh, it is Friday. You're right. Uh, Cigar Guard says it's Friday. You can get lit. <laughs> And sugar is great. Thanks, thanks for the yeah. <laughs> I, said, I, I was texting Cache and I was like, I'm sitting in the Anacortes Safeway parking lot eating sun chips in a minivan <laughs> high as fuck, <laughs> listening to static on the radio at full blast. <laughs> That's amazing. I said, lyrics to my next song, you just made the cut. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Sugar is my foil. <laughs> like, what? I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> oh, here we go. I'm Mr. Asylum. Sean, you ratted me out. What the hell, man? Okay. I don't know who this is, or I probably do, but no. <laughs> yeah. When I, yeah. You ratted me out, man. Boom. What's up? Thanks for hopping in. We're going to finish this coffee up and uh, maybe a troll? Maybe a troll. I don't know. We could. We will find out. What's up? I, Mr. Asylum. I'm Mr. Asylum. How did I rat you out, buddy? <laughs> oh boy. The Jub Jub. I try not to rat people out. I haven't done that since the witness relocation program. <laughs> All right, so we got PBR, two types of ice cream. Sugar's got more wax and weed than we knows what to deal with. <laughs> All right, so just throw in a little bit of blah, blah, blah there, and then... um. I believe Sugar's gonna come back and start playing some music or some shit. Or working on new tunes or he just bought a, a bunch of little mini synths and he got a brand new sound card. He had fun with that tour money. <laughs> Yeah, if you guys got links to your art, post them. People do count. Don't you remember Liquid Television on MTV back in the 90s? They actually had a... Uh... Whatchamahoob. Stick Figure Theater. That was it. Bam. There you go. I do not mind. Let's see some art. I 
I will ban you if it's a dick pic. <laughs> I don't do temporary bans in my channel either. It's permanent. For anybody who thinks they're a wise guy. I'll allow the linking of art, but I gotta be, you know. There we go. All right. Got some of the lines going over that uh, the whale thing. Uh oh, I think we might have lost. I'm Mr. Asylum. That was too boring to troll. Oh, we have an Instagram. All right. Good stuff. That little pumpkin hat. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, kids' clothing. Shit, you're gonna make a killing off that. Let's see. That's good stuff. Thank you for sharing. Still have it pulled up. I should have followed. Whoops. <laughs> if you want to add me on Instagram, I'll, I'll follow back and take a closer look when I got some more time. account dude all the all the 40 year olds are doing it <laughs> Facebook's for like 60 year old and up Instagram's like 30 40s snapchats for Millennials right did I get that right crunchy uh i do want to slide oh you can, eh, it's on camera okay Yes, thank you for sharing. A little bit of hatching up here. Let's set that back a little bit. 
<laughs> Most definitely. Boom. Alright. Start getting those uh, little lines up around the... Uh... I want to get the really condensed kind of crunch lines all the way over and then I can start working the way down. So just, just work this way now. <laughs> this is kind of like little, almost like some whirlpool lines around. It's like up and smashing into his body. And there'll be a bunch of like white foam and toothbrush work. Lights are flickering. My ghost must be here. <laughs> and again, we'll just kind of touch on these black lines that are under the water a little bit. A little bit of darkness. Bring them forward a little bit more. Not necessarily go over all of them. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a couple day streams for you, bud. <laughs> cool. Thanks, oh baby, and more. Yeah, for sure. I'll be around. And if not, I always, you know, archive on my YouTube, or, uh, or actually they're up here on Twitch for now, I haven't quite put them up on YouTube, but have an awesome night. I know I've turned cigars are into a uh, insomniac. <laughs> this asshole only streams at night. <laughs> cool, we look forward to seeing you. Sugar will have ice cream for you next time. I don't know where the hell he went. But <laughs> there we go. Turn me into a vampire, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I need to uh, do some daytime streams. But right now, I just, most of my daytime is like, you know, I don't get up till 10 a.m. because I stream so late. And then by, you know, I'm working on the house during the day and whatnot. So I'm like, uh, and can I fit a stream in? And, and uh, like I said, I, I've usually been, I usually work on all the grunt work. So unless you want to see me streaming bullshit Photoshop work or making business calls, I, you know, I'll have to find an actual day where I'm doing something cool during the day. So. But that would be funny to do like a, a big business call, stream live, and, and get everyone's opinion on whether I should take the deal or not. <laughs> Let me consult everybody on Twitch. Ooh. Oh, I don't have lawyers. I've got the general public.
go. Move that up a little bit. That line work. Well, it's 11 o'clock. This is definitely time to switch to PBR. Pardon me, one second. Uh, well, back. It damn well must have been out of 30 packs. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, ladies, cheers. Happy Friday. Or in your case, cigars are uh, Saturday morning. I think you're an hour into it already. You vampire, you. <laughs> A cigar. <laughs> I keep them here now. Coolest thing makes my uh, makes my drawing table look cool. He's got some art, some sketches. What are those fucking awesome cigars you just asked, John? Motherfucking right. <laughs> this. Uh, the, oh, I was uh, just kind of bringing around, like, maybe where the, uh, the water is starting to foam. Just as a reminder. And then I'll splatter that out and, you know, kind of make it uh, where it's hitting. So, yeah. You tell me. You think it's too thick? <laughs> but, yeah, that, that was the idea. It's just, uh, honestly, it was just one of those little noodling things where I was like, woo make it kind of foamy around it's like the base the base of the uh the foam and i'll actually go in and tap out like white you know or whatnot so no you don't need to shut up <laughs> that is a legitimate question that is absolutely okay i have no you know i'm not uh i'm not perfect here I rarely fuck up because I just work it into the painting and I wouldn't tell you, but <laughs> but uh, no, that's that's what that's going to be. So yeah, no, it'll be all faded out. I mean, you know, because I could go in and and honestly just kind of blacken all that in as like a like a shadow, and then the white will go over top that. You know, and it's coming out, casting his shadow over top of it even. Well, we just made that bigger and blacker, didn't we? <laughs> we will take care of it in the details. Sometimes like the, uh, yeah, sometimes like the highlights will, or what I'll do with the white um, will counter some of the, the, the darkness, but I just want to make sure that it's actually there. And a lot of times, little things like that are like just post-it notes for me because they do draw my eye to it, and I'll be like, "Oh yeah, I gotta make sure to put the foam in." Because sometimes I do have a forgetful, a forgetful eye. I'll shut the fuck. No, please don't shut the fuck. <laughs> it was funny, <laughs> but a legitimate question. I mean. And the fact that you explained it as, you know, the eye being the focal point or whatnot. You knew what you were talking about. For sure. <laughs> right? I you just give me something to talk about, too. I mean, instead of just rambling.
organic little squigglier lines as opposed to these more like Aztec carvings. The idea is to be stylized water but I don't want to look like some frat boys tribal tattoo either so. Definitely gotta throw some uh, some randomness in there. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to, you know, get some swirls in there. Get a little, a little crazy with the the currents. You know, I, I, I like the turbulence. The water was definitely not calm that day <laughs> when they when they stormed the beach, and it's you know obviously indicative of war and. Adds the kind of action that's necessary in uh, conveying the message in this, as well as being you know, stylistically pretty cool to work with. So let the ink hop all over the page. There we go. Where did sugar go? <laughs> cool. I'll be here. My bad, my internet crapped out on me, haha, ha. but you ratted me out, okay? Explain. I don't intend to rat people out. But was it your hand in the cookie jar? I feel bad if I ratted someone out unintentionally. I didn't make your internet crap out, did I? By ratting you out?
Honest brutality. More like my hand was around the bottle at Aftershock. <laughs> Who is this? Now you gotta, uh, you gotta identify yourself. I'm still lost. Ratted you out. Oh, that you drank all the booze? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to rat you out. I didn't want them thinking I drank all the booze. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> what the hell are you doing on here? <laughs> oh, I don't think I was ratting out. I think, you know, I was, I was trying to say, hey, this is a moment you should be proud. This, this man drank all that booze. He can hold his own. Cheers to you. <laughs> right time to time, chime in, man. I'm working on some war shit. World War II landing craft, 30 caliber machine gun mosquitoes. <clears throat> Where are you at? What are you, uh, are, are you at Eric and Naomi's or? I tell them to upgrade their internet. <laughs> I've learned <laughs> yes you have <laughs> you have had some wonderful trainers <laughs> in the fine art of drinking just the first interview I did and the amount of moonshine I, I drank with uh, Naomi was impressive Thank you. Yeah, so it's a big World War II piece I'm working on for a buddy of mine. His grandfather stormed Normandy and fought at the Battle of St. Lo and then made his way into Germany and part of the 115th. So, um, uh, see, he's got a big six foot by four foot commission coming to him commemorating his, his grandfather. And uh, so I'm doing these individual sketches. I'm taking all the vehicles and animalizing them. And uh, so I've, I've started with the machine guns and the landing craft, and then I have a Sherman tank I turned into an armored centipede, so it's going to be very trippy, very, uh, very surreal, but um, yeah, it'll tell the story of his, of his grandfather. I had to read a whole book on the 115th, so it was, it's been a very involved three-year-long process. I'm at my house. I was out in the back. Oh, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> you coming to Aftershock this year? I will be there. Looking forward to it. Should be a great show. Or, well, I don't really give a shit about the music. As long as you guys are there, it's going to be a good show. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm super excited. I want this to be one of, you know, these are just concept paintings for the big paintings. So you can tell how much effort I'm putting into this. I mean, I got I to gotta commemorate a guy who fought in World War II. You know I'm going to do it upright. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm humbled and, and I'm lo really looking to make this one of my, one of my masterpieces. So if, if, I, if I do have such a thing, so... Make sure I, I, I pay the attention to this painting it deserves. I mean, it's already been like four years since he commissioned it. So. <laughs> and not for lack of procrastination or being lazy. I mean, I, I have gotten caught up in this. Some bill paying artwork that needed to be done first. But, I, you know, I also really had a... I did have a tough time thinking up of the concept and how I wanted to present it. So, you know... Nagisama, what's up? Welcome back. Hello, and how are you? Cheers to you. It's Friday night. Have a paps. Or don't. Just check out some art. <laughs> Cigarzar is back. Cool. So, Cigarzar, uh, I'm Mr. Asylum here. I know this guy, so he's cool. Not a troll. <laughs> Uh, yeah, dude, I'll have it at Aftershock, and, uh, if you need ticket, if you need a ticket, man, I can get you a ticket, don't worry about it, you know, just, just, uh, 
touch base as, as it gets closer. If you haven't gotten one yet or whatnot, or you need a ticket, I can get you one. So, um, I'm in pretty good with them. Not a troll. <laughs> His internet crapped out. That's why when he said, hey, you ratted me out and then disappeared, we, we thought you were just someone trolling me. <laughs> but the Oddest Brutality uh, podcast, the Heavy Metal podcast, I did that uh, piece on my website with the big bear and the demon. I did that for... Um, uh, his parents' podcast. It's a badass heavy metal podcast. The thing is insane. Heavy metal, hard rock. Interviews with cool artists. Okay, yes, I've been on there. <laughs> very, very cool family. Very cool people to hang out with. They come out to Aftershock every year and use my booth as their uh, personal bar, which is A-OK. -okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, my second night I had a troll. I had this guy from Albania trying to get me to send him free artwork. He's like, just send me a piece you don't care about. And I'm like, I care about all of them. And they're very fucking expensive. So I'm like, my art is probably your country's like GDP. So <laughs> always good times, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for the next rock shows. Yeah, I'll be out in Kentucky for uh, Louder Than Life and Bourbon and Beyond in September, too. Uh, I'm excited. Nine Inch Nails is headlining Louder Than Life. Robert Plant's headlining Bourbon and Beyond. So I'm, I'm stoked. Cannot wait to see that. You stream, uh, so uh, Tyler, you stream on Twitch? Like you play games, you watch games, or did you literally set this account up so you could uh, come say hi to me? <laughs> I don't know if you like played Call of Duty or some shit or. And then paying attention to the overall like variations in the larger waves, like you see, like you know, as opposed to all this noodling. Also making sure there's like a rhythm to the waves themselves, maybe you know, so it just doesn't look like you know I'm just sending lines straight up, just everywhere. <clears throat> but that's one of the reasons I put in these, you know, bigger, darker lines right here, and then go in with the thinner ones, so it actually has like like here you can see a separation of this wave and then the bigger wave in the back, so. Little little technical interjection there. That way the whole ocean breathes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think it's it's getting there. I love all the line work. I love how it's starting to contrast the sky and kind of set this whale back in the water here. So we may be doing something right. Weird 3000 media resource decoding error thing again. It's weird. It only shows up on my uh, dashboard when I'm monitoring the stream. Ah, technology. Yeah. Well, that's why there's not going to be a hell of a lot of water in the big piece. <laughs> but, 
but there will be, uh, well, it'll probably be a section about that big. I mean, the, you know, it will have the whales, um, and there'll be multiple whales. And but yeah, I can't wait to to get started on the big piece as well. So. All right, thanks for the follow. Uh, Mr. Asylum, you drunk hooligan. <laughs> you booze stealing party crasher. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, but it, it'll, it'll, uh, I mean, just the texture and, and all the line work and whatnot, I, I love it. You know, it, it will add to the big painting as well. It'll be a nice, Nice way to frame in that bottom left corner, you know, because you'll go all the way up to the top of the painting and there'll, there'll be the circle with the Valkyries, so it'll be a nice contrast uh, contrast for that as well. So, Because the, uh, yeah, the Valkyries will be, be right above uh, the whale on, on the big painting. Oh, I got a PBR. I got a PBR, my friend. You know it. Thanks for popping in, dude. I'm on five nights a week. And I'll uh, I'll see it uh see it after shock. Oh, yeah, we'll get the Wagner going for sure. <laughs> That would be, uh, yeah, that would definitely be funny to, you know, we'll, we'll play some classical music and... <laughs> what if I could bring in like a symphony in my studio and just have them play it? <laughs> Later, dude. <laughs> That'd be great. An evening with the Anacortis Orchestra. Selections from Wagner, so Sean can paint whales that are landing craft and mosquitoes with machine gun faces. Sounds like a chill night. And then on the German side, we'll have a craft work night. Do -do 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 -do. Well, I guess it's all German, so. We'll find a way to work a German into the good side, too. Yeah, we'll do the Wagner for the, since it's the Valkyries, is it entering the gates of Valhalla? <laughs> Prometheus, the end of Prometheus, too, right? When he was putting all the uh, colonial uh, colonists to sleep. And then again, just kind of pop in and touch these little lines up here. <laughs> what did I watch today? Predator. Oldie but goodie. Let's see there, I just stamped my finger in the ink. But that's fixable. Such a hilariously good movie. Ridley Scott is really? I no, I had no idea. I wouldn't doubt they have. You know, a lot of creative people have different creative outlets, and uh, other than what they're known for, who pays the bills? Like I used to be a cook. I love cooking. It's creative. I cook down in New Orleans too, so I got to make some good food. That's awesome. Yeah, that's um, I've met some uh, some musicians too that are really good artists. And and uh, um, was it Chow from Stone Sour, the bass player? He came by the booth and uh, he's got some pretty awesome sculpture work. He takes these like Mickey Mouse dolls and makes them 